Welcome to this edition of Valor Media. This is episode number 60 for March 29th, 2021, with your host, Lori Riston. Hi, welcome to today's Crisis to Thriving podcast. I'm your host, Lori, and today's episode is entitled, Don't Be Afraid, Pray. I want to remind you up front to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. If you do, it will help others to learn about Valor Media and the biblical truths that can help them overcome the obstacles in their lives. Then, don't forget to set up alerts for each new episode so that you never miss one of these powerful messages that are designed to help you thrive in both life and business. So with that being said, let's get started. I'm so glad you could join us today because today I want to clue you in on one of the greatest things you could ever do to experience an amazing life. No, it's not picking the winning numbers for the Mega Millions Lottery. Sorry to tell you that. Actually, the best thing you could ever do to experience an incredible life is to pray. Plain and simple, prayer is the key to a thriving life. I can say that because prayers have made a real difference in my life. And I could really spend hours upon hours telling you about everything that I've experienced as a result of the time I've spent with God, seeking His will and asking for the desires of my heart. Some of the results have been nothing less than miraculous. And maybe you can say that too, but maybe you can't. Maybe you've struggled in this area, or maybe you're new to the whole prayer thing. But either way, prayer is a wonderful gift God has given to us to be able to communicate with Him. And that is especially beneficial in today's world, where things seem so out of control. As I've said before, there are so many things in life that we have no control over. Oh yes, we can try and control the uncontrollable, but it only brings more pain and more frustration. But being able to talk to God about all that is troubling us is so comforting. At least that's how I see it. You see, when trouble, chaos, or crisis comes, we could do ourselves a huge favor by taking some time to speak to God and asking for His help. And sometimes the answers or solutions to our problems come quick. But other times, those answers take a lot longer than we hope they will. That's because anytime we pray, there are forces in the spiritual world that will do everything they can to stop us from achieving the outcomes we hope for. The Bible says in Ephesians 6 verse 12, That we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Now that scripture right there is where we lose some people, because people today just don't seem to buy into all this good versus evil stuff. So if you're a little skeptical, please don't stop listening. Just hang with me for a while longer. Because one thing I think we can all agree on is the fact that really bad things happen in this world which at times are considered evil, and we are often left questioning why. Christians believe that there is a spiritual world where forces of evil work to destroy all the good works of God. And since we have been created by God, then that naturally means that those forces are against us as well. And those forces are going to do everything they can to stop God from answering our prayers. Now let me stop here for a moment and point you towards a story found in the Old Testament that I think is really going to solidify what I'm talking about. It's the story about a Jewish man named Daniel who was taken captive by the Babylonians in 605 BC. Since he was a man of wisdom and integrity, he was selected to work for the king who was not a Jew. But even so, he remained faithful to his Jewish convictions and traditions. So much so that at times he faced tremendous opposition, especially as he lived out his prayer life in front of others who hated him. At one point, he began having dreams about things that were going to happen in the future. And that's when he prayed to God to ask him for clarification so that he could gain understanding of what was to come. Now that story is found in Daniel chapter 10 verses 1 through 14. It says, In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a revelation was given to Daniel, who was called Belteshazzar. Its message was true and concerned a great war. The understanding of the message came to him in a vision. At that time, I, Daniel, mourned for three weeks. I ate no choice food, no meat or wine touched my lips, and I used no lotions at all until the three weeks were over. On the 24th day of the first month, as I was standing on the bank of the great river, the Tigris, I looked up, and there before me was a man dressed in linen, with a belt of fine gold from Uphaz around his waist. His body was like topaz, his face like lightning, his eyes like flaming torches, his arms and legs like the gleam of burnished bronze, and his voice like the sound of a multitude. I, Daniel, was the only one who saw the vision. Those who were with me did not see it. 
But such terror overwhelmed them that they fled and hid themselves. So I was left alone, gazing at this great vision. I had no strength left. My face turned deathly pale, and I was helpless. Then I heard him speaking, and as I listened to him, I fell into a deep sleep, my face to the ground. A hand touched me and set me trembling on my hands and knees. He said, Daniel, you who are highly esteemed, consider carefully the words I am about to speak to you, and stand up, for I have now been sent to you. And when he said this to me, I stood up trembling. Then he continued, Do not be afraid, Daniel, since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come in response to them. But the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me for twenty-one days. Then Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, because I was detained there with the king of Persia. Now I have come to explain to you what will happen to your people in the future, for the vision concerns a time yet to come. Now that is a pretty unusual and bizarre story. Some people may think it's completely far-fetched or delusional. However, one aspect that is easily relatable is that when God spoke to Daniel in a vision, he couldn't figure it out and was worried about it. So he stopped eating certain foods and mourned for a period of three weeks. Now, some of us may know what that is like. Some of us may have gone through some extremely stressful situation that caused us so much distress that we just couldn't eat. That used to happen to me all the time. In fact, during one of the darkest periods of my life, I lost so much weight that I went down to 86 pounds. That's because I was so discouraged and fearful that I couldn't see any way out of my crisis. But in the Bible, that's called fasting. And Daniel did that because fasting helped him to hear from God better during his time of prayer. Now let me stop here and say that while most of us will never have a vision as grandiose as Daniel, we all do have a vision within our hearts for the way we hope our lives will be. And like Daniel, we may not know what to do with that vision. Maybe we don't believe that it will ever come to pass. That's why we should just ask God for His guidance through prayer and maybe even fasting just like Daniel did. During Daniel's time of prayer and fasting, he was visited by a man who some believe may have been an angel or even Jesus himself. And even though Daniel had received a visit from a heavenly being before, he was still very afraid. In fact, on this occasion, all his strength left him and he fell to the ground. Now, I don't know about you, but if I saw a heavenly being, I'd probably react the same way, if not worse than Daniel. I'd fall down too. But sometimes it's not that dramatic. Sometimes hearing from God through the Holy Spirit can be just as scary. He may say something that requires us to have tremendous faith. And if we don't, then what he says may make us fearful. If we don't get a handle on that fear, it can cause us to stop moving. As a result, we won't respond with the urgency or seriousness that Daniel did. That's because fear can paralyze us if we aren't careful. All fear really is is a lie. It's false evidence appearing real. And that false evidence stops us from accomplishing the plans and purposes that God has for us. Our true enemy, Satan, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. God would never cause us to fear. So when we do, it's not from him. It's from Satan. Since Satan is a liar, then what he is saying is a lie. It's not real. So when we fear and not trust what God says in his word, we are giving in to that false evidence. Because of Daniel's fear, the man touched him and told him not to be afraid and then started to explain the meaning of the vision. But not only that, the man was sent to help Daniel. Both the vision and the man were God's way of going to great lengths to communicate with Daniel. He wanted to give the Jews of that day hope because of the bondage that they were in. Not only that, but I believe God did this because this would be an encounter that would later be recorded in the Bible. And thousands and thousands of years later, people like you and I would learn from it as well. This story teaches us so much about the way God deals with us. He helps us when we're afraid or when we don't have the strength to deal with something. He transfers His power to us, but only when we are in His presence. That presence can sometimes overwhelm us, just like it did Daniel. But one touch, one word, can give us the strength we need to endure anything that comes our way. Unfortunately, we often interpret worldly events or our own specific problems on a purely human level. But God reveals to Daniel, and now to us, that there are spiritual battles going on behind the scenes. What those battles look like, I don't really know. I could conjure up a million scenarios in my mind. But one thing I find interesting, 
that it took the same amount of time to respond to the prayer as it did for the fast. Daniel fasted for 21 days, and it took Michael, the archangel, 21 days to fight the spiritual battle and the answer to come. And knowing that there is a spiritual battle going on makes it easier on me, and hopefully you as well, to know that the only part we play in the battle is to pray. Because you see, the battle's not ours. It's the Lord's. I say that because of what the angel said to Daniel. And those words help us to understand God's role in our own lives. God explains things to us, but he's also very active behind the scenes. And even though we don't see it, he reassures us in the midst of our conflicts. He tells us the truth and he conquers evil. Now that gives me real peace. Knowing that helps me to realize that some of the problems I face are way bigger than me and I can't fix them. Sometimes we may not always know what to pray for, but all we need to do is ask God to show us. We can ask for wisdom and he will give it to us. Then we can use that wisdom to aid us in what to pray for. Then we need to pray. Will we always fast? No, but sometimes we need to pray and fast. God's word is not silent about that. He says when you pray and fast, not if. Now those instructions are found in the New Testament. Jesus told his disciples that some problems or evil will only be overcome by prayer and fasting. It was because of Daniel's three-week fast that the great angel was able to break through that dark opposition and meet with Daniel to provide the mighty revelation he was seeking. Fasting is a dynamic tool of powerful spiritual warfare and is extremely important when we need a breakthrough. Now, there's so much more I could say about prayer and fasting, but I'll save that for another time. My main goal in this episode was to help you understand that God can fix the problems that are plaguing you and your loved ones. Let God fight your battles. He is ready, willing, and able to come to your rescue. He can restore anything that has been lost or destroyed and put all the pieces back together to create a life that is better than anything you could ever imagine. He is just waiting for you to come to Him in prayer and then lay your request before Him so that He can begin working on your behalf. If you're struggling in your prayer life, then Valor wants to help. No matter what is preventing you from spending time talking to God about your current situations, Our staff is standing by, ready to speak with you about how to get started. All you have to do is email us at info at thevalorcenter.org, and we'll get you connected to someone that can speak with you and assist you in any way we can. You know, everybody you know has some advice for you on how to get rid of your problems and get a better life, but not everybody has lived what they're preaching to you. When I was in crisis, I received lots of well-meaning advice, but none of it solved my problems. It wasn't until I discovered a step-by-step plan for my life that I was able to get free from crisis and learn how to thrive. I needed someone to sit me down, take me by the hand, and show me the blueprint to getting a better life. And that's exactly what we're offering you, the blueprint. Fortunately, you get to benefit from my journey. I had to develop strategies on my own. The plan I have for you was woven together from over 20 years of study, along with learning from my own mistakes. The good news for you, though, is that you can skip all that pain and frustration. In my new book, You Were Made to Thrive, Seven Strategies to Move You from Crisis to Thriving, you'll be able to take all that I've learned and successfully taught others and put it to good use for yourself so that you can obtain the life you've always dreamed of. Don't waste another second of your life without putting these strategies into practice. You can purchase the book and the companion goal-setting workbook through Amazon or on our website at www dot valorexcel.com slash products. I also encourage you to check out some of our remote life development classes. You can register for these classes online and they will empower you to learn new ways of coping through crisis and reach a better life for yourself and those you love. You can find our class schedules and descriptions at www.thevalorcenter.org slash training slash class hyphen schedules. Then, if you want to participate, you can register for the classes at www.thevalorcenter.org slash training slash registration. Once you register, you'll receive an email confirmation receipt and a second email with an invitation and link to the Zoom meeting platform. If you'd like to get more up-to-date information about Valor, you can connect with us on our websites at www.thevalorcenter.org or www.valorexcel.com. Or you can find us on Facebook at Valor Ministries or Valor Excel. 
You can also email us at media at thevalorcenter.org and let us know what topics you'd like us to cover on future podcasts. And lastly, would you consider financially supporting us so that we can make an even greater impact in our mission? Your generous donations are tax deductible and they allow us to continue offering content like this. Just visit www.thevalorcenter.org slash donate to give securely online. Or you can send a check or money order to Valor Ministries, 324 East Antietam Street, Suite 104, Hagerstown, Maryland, 21740. I'd like to thank you for spending some time with us today, and I hope you'll come back again for next week's episode. Until then, remember this, you were made to thrive.